Well, God bless you. Welcome to the Wonderful Words of Life radio program. We are in a study entitled The Life of the Lord Jesus. We're going through the four Gospels, trying to combine them into one single narrative and just to look at and to study the life of Jesus that uh, the Father has revealed to us through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And we just concluded Matthew chapter 6, which to me speaks to me of Jesus, our our salvation. And we're entering into Matthew chapter 6, which speaks to me of Jesus, our sanctification. Notice how that we're saved and we're sanctified. And then through uh, these two great uh, works of God, then we are able to go on and to bear fruit unto God, good fruit unto God. Amen. So uh, this is what we ha- where we have been, and this is where we are going uh, today. Praise God. Amen. So chapter 5 speaks to us of sanctification in Christ, and then chapter 6 is going to speak to us of sanctification that is in Jesus Christ. You can't save yourself. You cannot sanctify yourself. It takes somebody greater than you and I, and that is uh, God uh, revealed in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He is both the Savior and the sanctifier. So chapter five speaks to me of, of who we are and what we are. And then, of course, chapter six speaks to me of what we do. Uh, now that we are in Christ. Amen. Praise God. So uh, we'll go ahead and start Matthew chapter six and verse one. But before we begin, let's go ahead and let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for the Holy Ghost that teaches us all things and brings all things to our remembrance. Holy Spirit, uh, the Spirit of Christ, we're asking you, Father God, in the name of Jesus to make uh, these words of Christ real to our heart so that we might know how to do all things that are pleasing in your sight. And Lord, we'll thank you for that in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Matthew chapter six, beginning in verse one. And we're going to be talking about in this session, uh, three areas of daily devotion, things that we are to do every day, things that Jesus says we are to do every day. And if Jesus says we are to do these things, then we need to be doing these things. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. All right. Verse one. Take heed that you do not do your alms or your giving to the poor before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. So right here, uh, Jesus is teaching us. And uh, and telling us that when we do our arms, in other words, when we give specifically, we're talking about giving to the poor. But uh, this also includes uh, giving to the church because the church should be involved in practical ministries, ministries throughout the community. Um, where would communities be if it wasn't for the churches? You know, in the community that I serve, we have uh, six or seven churches just in our general vicinity, and we're not a very large uh, township. And, of course, um, it's always been the churches that are the hub of our community, and that's why our community is such a great place uh, to live in. Uh, We don't have the upheaval and the chaos going on that in other cities uh, are going on there, and I thank God for that. But notice that Jesus says, take heed, be careful, take heed. Now, that's important. We need to take heed. In other words, what Jesus is saying is you better pay attention. (laughs) Amen. So we need to pay attention to this. Take heed that you do not give your alms before men to be seen of them. In other words, what Jesus is talking and saying here is if our motivation is to get glory of men, then that's our reward. We will have the glory of men, but we will not have the glory of God. Amen. So Jesus is talking here about the heart, giving as a means or as a provocation or as an inspiration of the heart because our heart belongs to Jesus. So we give without you know, notoriety, we give without receiving glory of men, we give for one purpose, and that is the love of God constrains us to do that. And of course, we want to be obedient to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. And so if he says that we are to give to the poor, which he did, remember it was Judas that had the money bag and that Jesus would instruct Judas to give regularly out of that money bag. Well, how did Jesus get the money if he didn't charge for his sermons? Well, God supplied the need. I tell you, Jesus uh, was not a beggar, but he was the humblest of men. Amen. And he definitely was not weak. He was meek, but he was not weak. And God supplied his needs, just like God will supply your needs. Amen. God wants you to be blessed so that you can go and be a blessing. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Jesus says here, take heed that you do not do your almsgiving before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your father, which is in heaven. So when Jesus says, take heed, what he's mean, what he says there is that you hold this in your mind. In other words, you pay attention. And of course, when he speaks of alms, he's talking about righteous deeds, not just money, but righteous deeds and acts. You know, getting involved in food distribution at your church. You know, t- uh, making sure that if somebody in your church is sick, that, you, you know, that you you at least call and find out if there's anything you can do to help them. Or if you know of somebody in your community that's going through a hard time, at least comfort them. Amen. See, these are all acts of kindness. These are all righteous deeds. Amen. But they have to stem from the heart. They can't be doing we can't be doing something to try to gain favor from God. That's listen, that is not going to work. The only favor that we have with God is the fact that we have accepted his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if Matthew chapter five speak to us about being perfect be you therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect, then chapter 6, this chapter, is talking about the things that we do as just men that have been made perfect. Amen, praise God. So there's a genuineness here when we're talking about giving. And then, of course, verse 2, Jesus says, Therefore, when you do your alms, do not sound a trumpet before men, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, I tell you what, I, I've, I've stood in church services and people get up on the platform and they talk about how much, how many thousands of dollars that they're giving. Well, see, they just got their reward, you know, and people would say, oh, man, I wish I could give that much money. Well, they got their reward. You know, they they sought the reward of men, and that's what they got. They got their reward. And so what Jesus is saying here, he says, when you do your alms, when you give, don't sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they already have their reward. That's it. They have no reward from God. They sought the reward of men, and so God made sure that they have it. But God's not going to reward them. As a matter of fact, he's not even going to remember that deed. And that's very, very important for us today. For men who give to be seen of men receive the glory of men. And what they have sought for, that's what they received. And then verse three, Jesus said, but when you do your alms, let not your right hand know what not let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. In other words, If your left hand doesn't know what your right hand is doing, then what you do, other men will not know about it. In other words, you keep your mouth shut. How many times did Jesus say after he healed somebody, now don't you tell anybody? You see, there's a reward from heaven for that. Praise God. When God sees your pure heart, he's going to bless you. And whatever you give, he's already said, I'll give you a hundredfold more. In other words, many times over what you give and what you forsake for me and for the gospel. Amen. Hallelujah. So we are not to put one hand in our pocket to give and then the other hand. You know, just wave it up and show, you know, how, you know, this is what I'm doing. I'm giving, you know, what, this I'm, I'm doing this good deed. Now I'm giving. No, we're not to give one hand and then the other hand lifted up for the praise of men. That's just not going to work. 
And then Jesus said in verse four that your alms may be in secret and thy father, which sees in secret himself. See, he's looking on the heart. That's what Jesus is talking about, seeing in secret. He's looking at your heart. What is the intent of our heart? Why are we given? Well, I give because I love Jesus and, and I know that Jesus would do this and he loves people and I love people. So I want to give to help this person out of love and out of a spirit of charity. Well, when Jesus sees that in our heart, amen, then he is going to reward us openly. Praise God. So give and it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking over, shaken over so that man shall give into your bosom. For what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you again. Amen. So Jesus here, he's speaking of the relationship, the special relationship that we have with God, the father in the kingdom of God. Amen. And when we give from the heart, guess what? That giving is sanctified. It's set apart. It glorifies God. And God is going to turn around and he's going to bless you for it. Praise God. Amen. Oh, I tell you, that just thrills my heart. Amen. All right. Now, the second devotion that Jesus talks about concerns prayer. This is found in verse five. Notice what Jesus said. And when you pray, you are not to be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the street that they may be seen of men. Verily or truly, I say to you, they already have their reward. So when people get up and they start sounding the trumpet, they start praying these glorious prayers, you know, these articulate prayers because they want everybody to know how eloquent they are and how wonderful their praying is. Well, when they sit down, they've already received their reward. So Jesus he, here, he's speaking to those who inhabit the kingdom of God who have a relationship with the Father. Amen. He's saying to them, don't you be like the hypocrites are. When you pray, you pray from your heart. You pray, and if other people hear you, you're not praying for them to hear you. You're praying before Almighty God. Now, there's a lot of times that congregational praying is praying out loud. When we all unite in one direction, going before the Father God, and there's always going to be people Mature people, I would expect, that are called to lead in prayer. There's nothing wrong with that. Amen. Praise God. As that, as a matter of fact, that's preferred because there's a lot of people that get up to pray and they don't have any idea what prayer is. But there are some that, you know, they they have grabbed hold of the throne of God and they have a, the, in the spirit of God witnesses that they are men and women of prayer. These are the people we love to have lead in prayer. Amen. Well, verse six says, and but when you pray, enter into your closet, talking about secret. Now, what is your heart? Your heart is your prayer closet. Your closet is not the place where you go. Of course, you know, we always have favorite places where we like to go pray. There's certain places in my house and there's certain areas in, in my church that I like to go and pray. But Jesus here, he's talking more about the heart. But you, when you pray, enter into your closet. And when you have shut the door, pray to the father, which is in secret. He's looking at your heart now. And your father, which sees in secret, shall reward you openly. You will know the people who are prayers. All you have to do. Amen. We have a we have a community prayer meeting every Saturday morning at a park in a city that's near us. And uh, there's uh, several of us. There's uh, at least seven, sometimes eight people that come together and we pray for about 30, 45 minutes. And there's one particular brother uh, when it comes to his time to pray. I tell you, you can tell this is a man of prayer because he knows how to pray. Now, he does it humbly. He does it meekly. He doesn't do it to show off. But yet you can sense the authority that comes out of his mouth when he's praying. And that's because he's come to know the Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. But notice in verse 6, notice Jesus says this, but when you pray, enter into your closet, and when you have shut the door, you pray to your Father in secret, and your Father which sees in secret, in other words, he sees your heart, he shall reward you openly. Well, I tell you, you can't be a person of prayer and not be a person filled with the Spirit. 
The more you pray, the more God fills you. And that type of filling, amen, that that type of evidence spills out on other people. Praise God. Now, you shudder from that. You shrink back from that because you don't want people to go around uh, talking about you. You know, you'd rather keep that to God. There's a there's something sacred about the arena of prayer. Now, there's times we do pray out in the open. There's times we do pray in public. That's all well and that's all good. And we should be doing that. Amen. But there is a secret place. There is a sanctified place of prayer, a reverent place. Amen. Where we come and we meet with our heavenly father. Amen. And those things, those glories, those, that, that communication, that uh, oneness uh, with the, the Father God, those are sacred things, things we don't want to talk about. We don't want to share because they're not for others to know. They're just for us to know. Amen. That's a special time. But I want you to notice that Jesus said, didn't if you pray, he did not say that if you pray, he said when you pray. So Jesus expects us to pray. Now, the amount of prayer that you put in is beneficial to you. I mean, it can you and me. I mean, it can profit us. If we pray a little, it'll profit us a little. If we pray a lot, it'll profit us a lot. But I will tell you this. If you want God to speak to you in your inner man and through your consciousness, the more time you pray, the more time you separate yourself under prayer the more God will speak to your heart. He'll show you, amen, paths to tread, ways and means to get where you want to go because he's a rewarding heavenly father. And if you do this from your heart, I'm telling you, God will reward you. Praise God. But notice what else Jesus says. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard For there much speaking, there is in false religions chanting, saying things over and over and over and over and over again, inciting evil spirits, amen, to manifest. Jesus said, no, you're not to do that. You're not to invoke spirits. You are to pray to the father of spirits and the father of spirits, amen, when he sees your heart, the genuineness and the purity of your heart, he will reward you openly. And then verse eight says, be not you therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask him. Notice that we are to go to the father God on behalf of our needs. But when we pray this way and we pray in faith, God is going to reward us. We are going to receive the things that we need. I can't tell you how many times that's happened concerning the radio ministry especially in the area of finances and in the area of direction. And all I did was just ask the father and miraculously he supplied the need and it didn't take weeks and months and years for that to come. It came in. Why? Because I know that what I'm doing on the radio is the will of God. Now I'm an imperfect creature. I wish I was more articulate. I wish I had a greater way and means to explain things, but that's not me. I don't I don't have a lot of ability that other men have. But one thing I do have, and that is that God has put in my heart a love for the word of God. And I love to teach the word of God so that others so that what God gives me, I can give to others. Amen. And I don't do that to be seen of men. I do that because this is part of our commission to go into all the world and preach the gospel. This is why I'm on the radio, because I want people to know. I've always had a desire to know. And when I come to know, I want others to have amen, to have a impart to impart to others the knowledge that I've gained. Praise God. Amen. So once again, verse seven. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Verse eight. Do not be like them. Do not be like them. In other words, what Jesus is teaching here is he's teaching the course of effective and victorious praying. And he's telling us what to do, but he's all also telling us what not to do. We are not to be like the hypocrites. Well, then who are we to be like? Well, we're to be like Jesus, aren't we? 
Jesus had a dynamic prayer life. Well, there's no reason why we can't have a dynamic prayer life. We can't be on the same level as the Lord Jesus, but I tell you, we certainly can pattern our life after him. And that's the whole purpose of the Sermon on the Mount, isn't it? Is to be like Jesus. Notice something that uh, Jesus said in the Gospel of John in chapter 16, verse 23. Notice, and in that day you will ask me no question. Truly, truly, I say to you, if you shall ask the Father for anything, he will give it to you in my name. That is one of the foundation scriptures that we are to use when we go before the Lord in prayer. We have this confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And we know if he hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. Praise God. How do we know that? Well, we ask in Jesus name and we do that by faith. Because Jesus said, if we ask anything in his name, he'll give it to us. Praise God. Amen. So that leads us to a whole array of ideas that we have commanding power, that we have authority in the name of Jesus. Amen. That we have power in the name of Jesus. That when we pray, when we pray with power and authority in the name of Jesus, that these things will be done for us. Amen. That we can stand in the evil day and having done all to stand, we can stand therefore, praise God. Prayer becomes a vital part of our life. And then Jesus goes on, and I don't have, uh, I don't have enough time in this session to, uh, to finish this out. So we'll just go over this and in the next session we'll go over it again. Notice in verse nine, it says, and after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So Jesus is showing us in this model prayer how we are to pattern our prayer life. This is a prayer pattern. Some people call it a model prayer. That's fine. If you want to call it that, that's fine. I call it this pattern. It's a pattern of prayer. Jesus taught us how to pray. Amen. And notice he says this, that first of all, we are to acknowledge the fact that that our heavenly father is the one that we're praying to in the name of Jesus. And we are to always consider his name to be holy. Now, that's a dynamic that you and I must always, always, always remember. God's name is holy because God is holy. And G and he said both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, be ye holy for I am holy. Of course, the word in the Greek holy is hagios. And that what that means, it means to be separate. We have been separated unto God. We have been separated for God's use. Amen. We have been sanctified and we have been set apart for God and only God and not of this world. John said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, they are in the world. And then he said, and the world passes away. Do we want to pass away with the world? Absolutely not. We do not want we do not want anything. We are we are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are not of the prince of the power of the air. We have been translated out of his kingdom, out of his power and dominion. Praise God. He doesn't he doesn't control us. He doesn't govern us. Amen. The Holy Spirit the one is the one that governs us. And the world passes away, but he that does the will of God abides forever. So Jesus here is teaching us how to do his will. Amen. And so we need to follow this pattern and we need to incorporate it into our prayer life. Amen. Hallelujah. And of course, you know, people, a lot of times they pray liturgy. That's fine. I mean, that's fine. As long as it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, that's great. But if we have spent no time praying and then we're called upon, you know, with such and such a service, you know, I want you to lead in prayer. All right. So if we go to our liturgy and we pick out a prayer and we pray it. And then we call that prayer. That's not prayer. That's just that's just mimicking something. We, we are not mimickers of doing something that we find in a book. 
Amen. Let's take that prayer. Let's get it on the inside of us so that when we pray that we pray it out of our heart and not just out of our mind. There's too much mind praying going on in the church today. What God desires is heart praying. All right. So notice he says, our father, which is in heaven. So our prayers to begin with the acknowledgement of God as our father. Hallelujah. Amen. What does that invoke in your thinking when we acknowledge God as our Father and as our Lord and Savior? Oh, I tell you, we can begin right now. We can spend most of our prayer time just praising Him, just giving Him glory and honor and praise for all the things that He is. Amen. Not just for what He does for us. I know there's a lot of things that God does for us. Some things we know and some things we don't know. Many things that God has done for us, we'll never know until we get into heaven. But it's it's but primarily we are to praise him for who he is. He is holy. Amen. And then Jesus goes on and says, hallowed is thy name or holy is thy name. God's holy. His name is holy. Too many people use Jesus Christ as an expletive that brings dishonor to his name. And that brings dishonor to him. Let not one born again believer ever use the name of Christ as an expletive. We are to always hold his name as holy. Praise God. Because his name represents his character, represents his person, represents just exactly who he is. Amen. Do we know who Jesus is? Do we really know? We call him Savior. Do we really know Jesus as our Savior? We call him Lord. Do we really know Jesus as our Lord? Have we truly submitted our entire being to him? Our spirit, our soul, our body, praise God. All that is reflected in our prayer life. If we can't spend much time before the presence of the Father, then we really don't know him that well, do we? I mean, think about when you fell in love with your husband or you fell in love with your wife. Uh, You wanted to spend all your available time with that person. Well, are we in love with Jesus? Do we want to spend an inordinate amount of time in his presence? I think we should, don't you? Amen. Well, we've run out of time. We'll stop right here, but let's pray. Father, Oh, Lord, we love you with all of our heart, mind, soul and strength. And I know many times we have failed you, not in words or acts of commission, but in words of acts of omission, things that we know to do, but we're not doing them. Lord, be merciful towards us. Lord, forgive us. Lord, as we repent, especially in the area of giving, in the area of praying. Now, Lord, we consecrate ourselves to put our mind upon you and not upon the things of this world. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to know you. With all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, we want to know you, Lord Jesus, deeper than we have before. Because we understand that every day with Jesus should be sweeter than the day before. So, Father, we bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Do you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that if you were to die today, that you would be prepared for heaven? If you're not sure, then I encourage you to pray this prayer with me. Father God, I come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ. I repent and ask you to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I surrender my heart and life to you. By faith, I believe I receive you as my Lord and Savior, and I thank you for receiving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed this prayer and desire to know more about the gift of Christ that the Heavenly Father offers you, then email us at rbtc86 at gmail.com. We will be glad to answer your questions promptly and provide you at your request with materials that will help you to grow in your faith in the Lord Jesus. This is Patsy Dunning. Thank you for listening to our broadcast today. And let me remind you to tune in to this station at the same time next week to hear more of the wonderful words of life. 
God bless you and remember what Jesus said. It is the Spirit who gives life.